Go back into the email pile. Francis writes in, I recently purchased a 54-inch Panasonic V10 Plasma and I'm loving it. My other components include the PS3, a Panamax M5400, and a Yamaha YSB4000, which act as my surround sound and receiver. I was thinking about installing some type of bias lighting behind my setup. I'd like to get your opinion of the pros of a bias lighting system and how it can benefit the home theater experience. Is bias lighting where you basically put a lamp behind your your screen? That's it exactly. Is that because it's really painful to go from a brightly lit screen to a really dark room? It's sometimes that. It, it can add a little bit of light, especially if the picture is uncontrollably bright. Mm -hmm. Then that helps tame your basically the appearance of it to your eyes, so that it's not so that that border of the of the frame to the back of the room isn't such a drop off in terms of luminance. I mean, so bias lighting actually is for other than really it, it serves a purpose in in situations other than a really dark room. I, I think one of the best things to do with bias lighting in a, in a dimly lit environment is for TVs that have poor black levels. Meaning that the the color of black when you see like the letter bar uh, the letter boxes right. on movies it appears not quite black but say grayish or bright and it's not as dark as it could be <laughs> adding a bias light actually fools it gets your eye to basically iris down a little bit and then it makes that black appear even darker and my, my it, old it, it improves the perception of contrast on a TV that has poor poor contrast oh, funny, performance because my old television if we turned all the lights out you'd be like black on the screen you'd be like no 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 that's black over there where the books are supposed exactly. to be exactly so for those those types of situations I find it quite useful. It, it, if you're going to install a bias light, though, of some kind, it should be a neutral gray color. And the color temp you're trying to shoot for is about 6,500 Kelvin. That's a relatively, it's not too blue, it's not too red as far as a shade of gray goes. And it's important that you don't want a colored light bulb. very high. I, I'm usually thinking like the, the sunlight, faux sunlight ones, usually around 4,000 K. That's pretty warm as far okay. as TV goes. I mean, broadcast television, as it's produced, and the DVD and the Blu-ray movies we look at are all done to that 6,500 Kelvin standard I'm just for, thinking for, like, for white balance. The last time I was, I was buying a big stack of bulbs to go in the garage, everything seemed to be like 3,100, 4,000 K. Uh, Check it out. I'm not sure if they're using maybe a different standard for that, but for TVs, that's specifically what I'm thinking of right there. And if you do do it, usually they come in the form of a fluorescent tube, and then that can go behind your display. And again, uh, there are also some good test patterns out there to determine how bright of a light you will need for that environment. Joe Kane, in his HD Basics disc, has a test pattern that puts a white square up on the screen, and you're basically trying to match the light level coming off the screen of that white square uh -huh. to what the bias light's putting out from the sides, wow. using, using like a light meter, simple so light meter. This is basically, do I want it coming out equally from all sides of the panel? Ideally. I mean, it would be the, if you could, that would be one, that would be probably be the best way to do it. But it also depends, too, on, you know, in this case, we're in a corner uh -huh. with this particular display. Maybe you'd want a little bit brighter in the center or maybe orient it vertically at the lighting system so that it, it puts the light and makes it a more even pattern on the back of the wall. Have you ever seen a bias lighting kit? Because people, sure. people talk about this all the time, but I don't think I've ever like, you know, been anywhere they're like, would you like to include the HDMI cable in a bias lighting kit with that, <laughs> Mr. Norton? That's a hard sell, and it's hard to show in a, in a right. store environment anyway where most stuff's bolted to the wall already. You'd have to do it in a home theater room maybe, maybe something like a, here, in, here in the U.S. we have a Magnolia Hi-Fi sure. that's in our, in our Best Buy stores, and they also have rooms that they could show off a system like mm -hmm. that, but it's not as common as I, as I think. It's more important to have that light behind the screen, literally, than it is in front of the screen. So if you have a room where you just need a little bit of light in there, but and you want to avoid getting reflections on the screen, a bias light just might be a way to add that light to the room without without interrupting the picture or altering the picture. Do you like mount it like right on the back of the HDTV, or do you put it on the <laughs> shelf behind there, or do you like strap it to the... That depends on the setup situation, <laughs> the scenario that you're involved in. If possible, you know, yeah, double stick tape it to the back of the screen, as long as you're not covering any vent holes up or anything like that on the TV itself. But it's, it really comes down to, in my mind, and the way I've seen it, and the way I've used it, it's, it's improving that black level right. appearance on a TV that has poor black levels. That's really what you're aiming at. 6500K, experiment with the location. Yeah, and okay. if possible, you're not going to find a dimmable situation. You're not going to usually find a right. dimming tube uh, fluorescent lamp. So go for a lower wattage than you probably think you need. Good to know.